did it again folks made it to the end of the week and you can get your alabama fix right now on a friday tgif edition of the show hottest show on the streets best form of alabama football news notes and information that being in my own words the podcast with yours truly stephen m smith of touchdown Alabama Magazine coming to you from Tuscaloosa. As always, the show more than me, bigger than me, as we got the man, the myth, the legend, the maestro, John Ivory. Call him JP, but John Ivory making sure we're good. We're on the up and up in terms of the show and coming to you live via YouTube. And as always, each and every time we do this, we encourage you, uh, the Alabama football fans, to smash the like button, give a thumbs up on the show, and hit the subscribe button on YouTube. That tells us here at TDA that we have to continue providing you, supplying you, giving you the best in news, notes, information, and coverage on your favorite football program, that being the Alabama Crimson Tide, because of you. We're over 8,000, that is correct, over 8,000 subscribers strong on the YouTube channel. So definitely want to continue to encourage you to help us grow the network channel and the brand. On Friday, got a jam-packed slate of topics to get to. And uh, we st we'll start things off with a couple of updates and after the updates we'll dive into kind of a fun conversation as we look at the most impactful recruits the most impactful signees of the Nick Saban era if you agree with the list I have give us a call on that if you don't agree with the list that I have give us a call as well 205-448-1358 the number to do that 205-448-1358 but after talking that we will sit down with my man Matt Cadell, former Alabama wide receiver. He'll come on the show to give his thoughts on the NFL draft where Tua Tagovailoa, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs III, among others, are concerned and talk about what has him so excited for the upcoming football season. And then afterwards, we'll dive into, can Alabama have its next explosive tight end in uh, Jaleel Billingsley. Is Billingsley the next O.J. Howard? Is he the next Irv Smith? Is he the next big-time explosive tight end? We'll touch on that and dive into your phone calls, tweets, text messages, thoughts, questions, and concerns on this edition of the show. But starting things off here with updates, according to NFL.com, 58 prospects for this year's draft class will participate virtually in the NFL draft of the 58 guys. Five of those hail from the University of Alabama. When you look at Tua Tagovailoa, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs III, Terrell Lewis, and Jedrick Wills, all five of those young men will participate virtually 
in this year's draft coming up here in a couple of weeks. Also, a big congratulations in order for former Alabama cornerback Savion Smith who has signed with the Dallas Cowboys, joining one ha-ha Clinton Dix in the secondary, the former five-star from Tampa, Florida, after spending his freshman year at LSU and some time in Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Smith had one year with the Crimson Tide. That was 2018, where he had 60 tackles, five pass breakups, a team-high three interceptions, helping the Tide win the Southeastern Conference title. So, Kudos there for Savion Smith. Also, Barrett Jones. Another kudos to the former Alabama offensive lineman and a decorative lineman at that, helping the Crimson Tide win three national titles in 2009, 2011, and 2012 at three different positions. Barrett Jones welcomed a healthy baby boy, a healthy son to the Barrett Jones family as little Barrett. Anderson Jones Jr. entered the world earlier today, this morning, at 8 pounds, 6 ounces, 21 inches long. Big congratulations to Barrett Jones, welcoming young son into the family. In terms of other updates here, we have Alabama men's basketball folks. Coach Nate Oates is really really doing it he is building a top 10 signing class for 2020 as of today Bama got a huge verbal commitment from Jordan Bruner the graduate transfer from Yale at six foot ten a forward with a seven foot one wingspan so we look at Keon Ambrose Hilton Josh Primo Keon Ellis Darius Miles and Jordan Bruner Coach Nate Oates stacking together a really, really, really good class. And if he can get one Herbert Jones to return to the capstone for the 2020 season, it can be really big for Alabama men's basketball. So Coach, uh, Coach Oates on the right track here. And then last but not least, Tua Tagovailoa. The Alabama quarterback or former Alabama quarterback had his virtual pro day on Thursday in Nashville and uh, as you're seeing the video on screen looks incredibly well throwing the football subtle burst subtle explosiveness with his footwork with his hips Jerry Judy there participating on the field with him in the pro day the event was an hour long it consisted of 55 uh, scripted throws including 20 throws according to one Trent Dilfer that were that took place in kind of a dynamic setting so to uh making sure that he's putting everything out there for NFL teams to see document take notes on Trent Dilfer mentioned that in a tweet that to uh has or he's on the same par throwing wise with the likes of Aaron Rodgers and Dan Marino. This comes from one Trent Dilfer who's been working with Tua consistently, countlessly as the videos from the virtual pro day were made available for all 32 NFL teams. So once again, people, Tua's put the information out there, healthy, 100%, no excuse for these NFL franchises. If you want Tua, if you want the Native Hawaiian, he's making himself available to get drafted as a top five pick. So really impressed and really proud of what the young man has been able to do in preparing for this venue. But we now dive into the first topic of conversation and kind of a fun one here. Most impactful players, most impactful signees, most impactful recruits of the Nick Saban era since 2007, Saban's first year. Now, once again, people, if you agree with the list that I'm about to show right now, then you know the number, 205-448-1358. Give us a shout saying that, hey, Stephen, we're filling your list. Or, Stephen, I think your list is complete trash, and I have a rebuttal on that list. So if you like the list, if you have a list of your own, 205-448-1358. We can get that done. But as we queue up the list here on screen, these are my guys, my top impactful recruit signees of the Nick Saban era since 07. I mean, 2007, you got to go Rolando McClain there uh, at the inside linebacker position. 2008, a lot of people would go Mark Ingram. I wouldn't blame you if, you if you went that route. The first Heisman Trophy winner in Alabama history. I personally went Julio Jones because Julio stamped Nick Saban 
as the elite recruiter. If Julio did not put on the Alabama hat and gloves back in 08, would Alabama be able to own the coastal region of the state in the recruiting aspect? Who knows? So 2008, I, I went with Julio Jones. 09, of course, you got A.J. McCarron there, self-explanatory. Three-time national champion, two-time national champion as a starting quarterback. A lot of these were simple. A lot of these were easy. Two of these I had the most trouble with would be the 2013 class and the 2016 class. This is because there was so much talent in both of those classes. 2013, ultimately, I went with Derrick Henry as the most impactful recruit just due to the young man from Uly, Florida, the first 2,000-yard rusher of the Nick Saban era, 2,219 yards, a guy that swept the college football awards show, second Heisman winner, put the team on his back in 2015 and carried it to a conference championship and a national title. However, there were so many great defensive players from that 2013 class when you discuss Jonathan Allen, Tim Williams, Reuben Foster, Sean Robinson, Eddie Jackson. I mean, so many great defensive players in 2013. And as much as I wanted to pick one of those guys, and as much as I wanted to look at O.J. Howard and tight end, who also came in 2013, I had to go with my gut feeling that being one Derrick Henry because he has meant so much to the program. But that was 2013. 2016 was tough because though – Jalen Hurts would be the most influential player due to he can come to Tuscaloosa right now and still be loved by everybody in the organization, by everybody in terms of the fan base and what he was able to accomplish on the field, off the field. We're looking at 5,625 passing yards over – 7,000 total yards offensively, 71 total touchdowns, a guy that had a massive amount of accolades and awards, and though he was benched in the national championship game for Tua Tagovailoa against Georgia, the way he handled that with so much class, I'm going to be honest, if this was me, I would have snapped on Coach Saban. I'm going to be real. If this was me, I would have let the chopper fall. I would have let the thing bang, bang on Nick Saban one time. I'm just saying, if this was me, I would not have handled it in the mature manner that one Jalen Hurts handled it. So was able to compartmentalize a lot of things, keep a level head, and not just be an Alabama legend, but he would also go to the Oklahoma Sooners and become a legend in that, at that program as well. So though Hurts would be the most influential player, the most impactful player, I'm giving that to Josh Jacobs. And – Kudos to Burton Burns. Burton Burns, who is right now the running backs coach for the New York Giants. It took Burton Burns to literally nudge and pester and stay on top of Coach Saban to go out there to Tulsa, Oklahoma, McLean High School to get Josh Jacobs. And uh, this is somebody that, despite people look more so on his junior year, the 2018 season, Jacobs' freshman year was one that is highly slept on. I mean, he was a beast in 2016. If you remember, he came in, I think he had 85 carries for 567 yards, four touchdowns. He had 14 catches for 156 yards. The kid just completely went off. The young man completely went off. And I remember when it was uh, Damian Harris and Bo Scarborough, both of those guys got banged up at times that year, and uh, Nick Saban went with Josh Jacobs in a few of those games. He had 100 yards rushing against Kentucky that season. Just a uh, guy that when you put him on the field, you saw the speed, you saw the catching ability, but you saw his prowess in finishing plays, running guys over, being a pinball, knocking guys down, running as if his life depended on it. He had something to prove. He had something to gain. He was running away from something, but running to something even better. So Josh Jacobs, just to me, 2016, uh, Jalen Hurts more influential, 
Josh Jacobs more so impactful. So the 2013 seat, the 2013 class and the 2016 class are two that I had some trouble with because of the amount of talent in both classes. But overall, 2013 Derrick Henry, 2016 Josh Jacobs. How about 2014? J.K. Scott made from this. I know what you're thinking. How could Steven put a punter on this thing? I'm going to tell you this right now. If not for J.K. Scott in 2014 coming out of Denver, Colorado, I don't know how Alabama survives on defense. 2014, and this is after C.J. Mosley went to the NFL and uh, people thought Trey DePriest would be the next guy at inside linebacker. It didn't pan out that way. The baton ends up hitting Reggie Ragland. You had Landon Collins in the secondary. Though you had some pieces, the defense still had a lot of issues, and it took the golden leg in John Kimball, a.k.a. J.K. Scott, to get it done. And this was a young man of whom averaged 48 yards a punt, Dropped 31 of his 55 punts inside the 20. He was hitting absolute moon balls. I still don't get for the life of me why he never won the Ray Guy Award. Probably the reason why the Ray Guy Award has no credibility, period, to the Alabama fan base. But a guy in, in J.K. Scott, if you just look at his career, 243 uh, punts, first all-time, 11,074 yards, first all-time, averaged 45.6 yards a punt for his career, and a guy that of his 243 attempts, he dropped 108 of those inside the opposition's 20-yard line. For you mathematicians out there, that is 44.4%, so almost half of J.K. Scott's punts for his career were drilled inside the 20. He made life difficult for the opposing offense. He made life grand for the Alabama defense as they were able to be really confident that if J.K. Scott's footing this ball 60 yards in the air, we're going to be able to dominate the opposing offense. But just my thoughts there, as you see here on screen, my most impactful players, my most impactful signees recruits of the Nick Saban era. Once again, folks, if you have a thought on this, if you like my list, give us a call. You can't stand my list? Do the same thing as well. Let's debate. Let's compare. Let's have a conversation. Get a dialogue started on this. We're going to take our first break here on a Friday in my own words, the podcast. Just getting this thing revved up. Upon our return, we jump into your phone calls, tweets, thoughts, questions, chats, and concerns after this. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care in support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to Touchdown Alabama. Alabama.com today and roll tide. We are back blessing your ears and blazing the streets on the hottest show on the streets, the best form of Alabama football news, notes, and information on a Friday that being in my own worst, the podcast with yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. And folks, this is your time, 205-448-1358, the number to call in to let your voice be heard, 205 448 
13 to 58. You can also text with that number, leave a voicemail with that number. You can tweet the show at In My Own Words TDA on Twitter. That's at In My Own Words TDA. You can also tweet me directly at Coaching M. Smith. But we take our first call on a Friday, and it's the man, Waylon. Waylon, what's going on, man? Hope you're doing well. How you doing this evening? It is Friday evening and TDA. What's going on, Steve Hine? Doing well, man. Doing well, Wayland. Well, first segment here, I kind of dove into my in, uh, my impactful signees, impactful recruits of the Saban era since 2007 because everything starts in recruiting. But do you have a thought, Wayland, on who were some of your impactful recruit signees that ever came in here? Well, you had a heck of a list there. You know, I had Henry in there, A.J. Well, probably the best punter in Alabama history besides my buddy uh, Hayden Stockton was on the 92 team. That would be him and Mr. Scott. They were great punters. Rolando McLean, ha-ha. And the list goes on, Stephen. You can just keep naming names. It never stops. It never stops, boy. But I would, I would, I would really like to have J.K. Scott back. I mean, I know – the punting position doesn't always get the love, but, you know, Scott was a major weapon. He was a major help for the Alabama defense, and you just knew when that six-foot-four-inch guy put his foot to the ball, you knew it was traveling darn near 70 yards in the air, which was just great help for the defense. I, I would not mind having J.K. Scott back. No, I would like to have Mr. Scott back, too. He was a real talent. There's no doubt about it. But I've noticed uh, here that uh, Rex Ryan sort of got up under my main man's collar about two. It looks like to me there, him and uh, looks like PlayStation 2020 there on the workout to me. What do you think, Stan? I mean, two of them looked good. And, 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 I, and I, I'll go back to this. If I'm, if I'm putting stock in anything in terms of quarterbacks, I'm putting stock in Trent Dilfer because Dilfer played the game in high school, played quarterback in high school, played quarterback at Fresno State in college, played for 14 years in the NFL, won a championship, in a, won a Super Bowl with the Ravens, and he has been uh, developing some of the best guys to ever come out of that Elite 11. So if Dilfer says whoever drafts Tua wins this draft, I'm putting my stock in Dilfer as Tua looked really smooth in the virtual pro day, providing to all 32 teams, you have no excuse. You got the information on Tua. The ball is in your court. Make the move. Exactly. Well, we know it's Friday and all the information is correct, and we didn't want these riders to get up under the collar of our main man down at TDA, so we're going to wind it up here with our little poem and, We've got a little poem there from Mr. Ryan, and I think he got up under the collar of my main man down here, Stephen M., so we're going to see what we can do about that. This. So here we go, Stephen. Roses are red. The crimson makes people blue. Tua was the man with a talented, hot, and accurate hand. He made the teams wonder how many passes would land in the hands of the best four wide receivers in SEC land. Some people think Tua would be a risk. All he has to do is just flick his wrist. So before you point your finger, Rex Ryan, and run your big mouth, you sit and wonder if you would have had a quarterback like Tua, you would have had a few Super Bowl trophies to take to the house. All right there, Stephen. Everybody down at TDA Day, y'all have a good weekend, and we'll catch y'all Monday. 10-4, I'm gone. Bye-bye. Appreciate it, Wayland. Wayland's going to get that Grammy, man. Wayland's going to get that Grammy for poet for Poems of the Year. He's going to get that. We're going to dive in, though. This chat line on a Friday here on YouTube. You guys hitting us up so far in the chat line. We actually have a question here. I'm trying to find the question here. And thought we had it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Tony Ayo. Tony Ayo writes in, what's going on with Bama recruiting? Bama 13th in the, in the SEC by... 24-7 sports. Well, what's going on right now in recruiting Tony, a uh, Tony Ayo is Saban and the staff, they are continuing, they are continuously get, keeping in contact with 
these young athletes, these recruits are talking to these guys each and every day. I know our own Justin Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, who was on the ground in the recruiting trail. He was featured on the show couple of shows back telling talking to us about how you know the coaching staff has been talking to their main targets tw two and three and four and sometimes five times a day making sure that the main guys they're high on they're keeping them in the loop on what's going on I know it's frustrating because a lot of these young men they want to visit the program they want to come to Tuscaloosa they want to come down I get that but with this global crisis and with the leaders and authority telling us or providing us the news of social distancing, stay at home, uh, don't take risk or don't be too risky. You kind of have to follow protocol. So right now, you know, Coach Saban doing the due diligence of uh, Zoom and FaceTime and all of these virtual apps to keep the players engaged, continue the communication. So hopefully once this once the virus dies down or once it dies off, we can get back to having those official and unofficial, unofficial visits. Everybody's kind of suffering right now on this trail due to the coronavirus pandemic. But knowing Nick Saban, he is hard at work keeping in contact with his main guys on this recruiting trail. But we, we appreciate the question there on recruiting from Tony Yayo. Continuing the uh, list here on this on the uh, chat line, Kelsey Shepard writing in on a Friday. We have another Waddle type athlete possibly coming in. In six foot, he's six foot, he's six feet, one hundred seventy five pounds. Runs a ten one in the hundred meter hurdles, which is equivalent to a four two in the forty yard dash. Who is that, Kelsey Shepard? Who is that running a ten one in the hundred meter hurdle? That could be the next. It could be the, in the 10, in 100 meter dash. That could be the next Jalen Waddle. So get us that name, Kelsey Shepard. Definitely want to know who that guy is. Let's see here. Tony Yayo also says this show needs TJ LSU dad. That that dude is funny. Don't need TJ LSU dad. I'm fine rocking and rolling with this with me, the man John Ivory, Justin, and who and whoever else that we have on this show. So don't need TJ LSU dad in here, but. Funny thought there coming in from Tony Yayo. Got another call in the queue on a Friday. You are live on In My Own Works, the podcast. What's going on? Colin. How are we doing? Hi, Stephen and Je I'm doing great. And yourself? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. Wonderful. I just called, listen to the show, and you know, here doing this pandemic, trying to stay calm and stay focused and just listen to you and, and John in, in the background there, just excited about Touchdown Alabama and what you're doing. And you guys are doing an awesome job in keeping us aware of what's going on at the University of Alabama Road Tide football team. And I just want to encourage y'all just to keep doing what you're doing, man, and, and uh, have a great day, a wonderful Easter weekend. And we appreciate you in Perry County. Just keep us up with at TDA with what's going down. Appreciate the call, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. You have a guys have a great evening. Absolutely. Friday, we're getting the call line blowed up here, talking Crimson Tide football. We'll jump this thing back here into the chat line where we pick up Frederick Turner who writes in the season will be back we have to get the United States up and running road tide football Frederick Turner answering the question from one Willie 351 who wrote in is there an over under from Vegas on if the season will come back or not so Frederick Turner high hopes very positive on a return to this season Tony Yayo writes in, Trent Dilfer, he kind of had a bummy in a fail career. Yes, stat-wise, Trent Dilfer wasn't the best, but as far as knowing what it takes to get there and knowing how to develop young players to see the vision as far as the mechanics and playing the game of football, Trent Dilfer, one of the best guys out there. So stat-wise, maybe not the best, but knowing how to play the game, uh, None that much better than Mr. Trent Dilfer. But we go to our next break here on the show. Continue to rock and roll with us on the chat line. Upon our return, we sit down with my man Matt Cadell to talk more Bama football and Crimson Tide prospects in this draft right after this.
of delicious homestyle cooking, sushi, and hibachi. Check out Otoro Hibachi in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. At home and you can't get away from the TV because the Crimson Tide is about to score? Don't worry. Delivery is also available through Waiter and Crimson To Go. That's Otoro Hibachi in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And make sure you let them know the good folks at Touchdown Alabama sent you. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to touchdown Alabama.com today and roll tide. We are back in from the break, folks, on a Friday TGIF edition of the show. Hottest show on the streets, best form of Alabama football you're going to find anywhere in my own words, the podcast with yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. And the guest that we are bringing in is a very special one. People think, people believe, The 2008 matchup between Alabama and Georgia was the ultimate game that helped start Alabama getting back to being on top of college football. And though that's true, and though there's much legitimacy to that statement, other people believe it was that 2007 matchup between Alabama and Arkansas that got the tie back rolling. And I remember that game vividly because it had John Parker Wilson at quarterback, and it had a certain young man to catch the game-winning touchdown in Bryant-Denny Stadium. We bring him on right now, the star from that game, from that 2007 season. He played for the University of Alabama from 2003 to 07. It is Matt Cadell. Matt, my man, welcome into the show. So happy to have you. So glad to be here, man. Thank you, Stephen, for the introduction, man. You make me want to run out on the tunnel again. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure. Hey, I try to be a hype man, man, but sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. But, hey, we'll flow with it. Very happy to have Matt Cadell here on the show. Once again, people played for the University of Alabama at wide receiver from 2003 to 07, that being with Mike Shula and one Nick Saban and Matt Kind of for starters here to to kick this thing off, when you look at just uh, this point right now in terms of the coronavirus pandemic and uh, Alabama probably, or Alabama not being able to have spring practice, everybody was looking forward to the spring and seeing the new guys, the Bryce Youngs, the Will Andersons, the uh, Jace McClellans, all of the incoming freshmen and also the returning guys, but not being able to have that due to the global crisis. But Nick Saban talked about having kind of a uh, OTA type deal where you have the 14 teachable practices prior to the season where you're showing guys the technique, you're demonstrating the technique, you're teaching guys what to do, how to do it, and why it's important to execute it. And I remember you and I had a conversation prior to today about how beneficial that would be and you being a former player, how helpful would it be for Alabama to have these teachable practices kind of like on the NFL style, despite not being able to have as much contact as it would like to? Um, I think it would be very beneficial. Um, I think it's similar to how uh, NFL prospects, they don't have a spring game. They kind of go to a rookie camp or OTAs and once they get drafted. Uh, from an NFL team, and it's very beneficial. Um, it'll be um, everything from meetings, film, practicing on the field, 707, 11-11, just non-pad teaching fundamental with the coaching staff. And I think that's well needed in this um, these uncertain times if we plan to have football in 2020. And I think Coach Saban spoke to that, having some type of OTA, some other team activities where – you can get engaged with your team and have that interaction. I think the uh, hopefully the NCAA will do the right thing and kind of have um, some type of plan for for that in, while we're dealing in these uncertain times. Now, uh, with players having this much of a break or this long of a break, Matt, and I know 
of course, when you guys played, uh, you had breaks after the spring because you go you go into the summer. You had that summer break, but it's not in this type of a circumstance. But th- the main gist here is upon coming back from this break and uh, being able to have these uh, small teachable like practices. How important will it be for these players to? had the passion to want to get back on the field, but also have the wherewithal to know, don't, you know, go too hard in terms of don't hurt your teammate, don't overexert yourself, have the practices, have some contact, but don't be overboard with it in terms of the players getting back. Um, I think the uh, the players, the way Coach Saban runs practice, I think, not only would the players be engaged, but they would know the correct tempo of how to practice. You know, we're all the same team and we want to keep everybody healthy. And that's what gives us the better shot of being um, becoming champions. And I think as long as the players stay engaged, stay in contact with the coaches as far as the playbook, um, um, what they want to install uh, for camp, I think that's the most important thing, making sure the players stay in shape. Uh, I think these young guys coming in are really going to have to, you know, just be more mature and just really focus on, you know, having that self-discipline because you're not able to go to the gym just yet. So just making sure you're working out each day, pushing yourself, improving constantly, doing what you can to take your game to the next level. So you'll be that much more prepared when we hopefully have these teachable activities before the 2020 football season. We're live here, folks. If you're just tuning in to the show, we got Matt Cadell, former Alabama wide receiver, played for the Crimson Tide from 2003 to 2007. On In My Own Words, the podcast, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith. And Matt, prior to us, have prior to having you on the show, you had a little bit of a, um, you wanted to put on your draft hat a little bit. We want to do a little bit of NFL oh, draft yeah. talking here in terms of Tua Tagovailoa, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs III, and a few other Alabama prospects. Looking forward to hearing their name called or names called in the next couple of weeks here. So starting off with Tua, a lot of people have this fear of, uh, I don't care what the reports have said, what the doctors have said. I don't trust Tua's hip. I don't know if it's good or not. This is a huge risk, huge risk. One guy called it the greatest risk in NFL draft history, but we have seen Tua on video. We have seen Tua move around on his hip with his legs, look clean, look smooth. If you are, if you were to be, if you were to put your mind in a, the mindset of a GM right now, man, and you were looking at Tua, how would you be evaluating Tua right now? What would be your um, your grade of Tua? Uh, well, I just think Tua is just one of the top prospects in this draft. If he's so he's such an elite prospect. If he had not not had the injury history, it's no discussion who who will be saying would be the number one pick. Um, everybody knows of Tua's talent, his arm strength, his accuracy. Um, but if I'm a GM, um, I'm looking at Tua. Obviously, I'm just trying to you know. Obviously, the medicals is what's big with Tua. His health. Um, not only that, but I want to see where his head is at. Uh, does he has he learned from his mistakes? Does he fit our system? Um, is, is he going to be doing the things to help continue to develop his game so he doesn't take those unnecessary hits? And I'm going to get with his – I'm going to see how I can get as much medical information on him because the talent is there, and I just could not pass up on a talent like Tua uh, with his arm strength, his accuracy, his moxie in the pocket. Um, I need as much information as possible. And I think – it's not that big of a risk because uh, you can get quarterbacks now with the, you know, they structured the CBA a couple of years back where these rookies aren't making those major uh, cost uh, contracts. So it doesn't cost the organization that much money. So you, if you're looking at Miami at five, you can sit there. You don't, you didn't, you didn't necessarily tank for Tua, but you still have an opportunity to invest in your future Um of the core of, of your organization and have your quarterback to a falls in your lap at five. I think that's, I would rather be the GM that does not pass on to and takes to So I'm doing everything I can to have as much medical information on him and just see as far as interviewing, seeing where his head at, um, learning about how his mind processes information 
And because um, I would not, he's such a great talent. I will, That's w- what I'll be doing, looking to draft to it and just gather as much information as possible. Now, my whole thing, Matt, is everyone talks about, well, Joe Burrow's the safer pick and uh, uh, Justin Herbert's the safer pick. But t- to me, even you would have safe picks that would bust. You would have safe picks that may yeah. not turn out successful in the NFL. And uh, life, to me, is about taking risk. We have seen so many talented quarterbacks get hurt in college, some get hurt in the NFL, still go on to do great things, and the teams that draft them don't regret drafting them due to the the injury. So my thing here is, am I way off on my assumption of uh, just because uh, this guy may be a safe pick doesn't necessarily mean he's the right pick? Am I way off there? Not way off, but um, I, I you you have to look at the draft from a lot of different perspectives. I mean, you look at Cincinnati's uh, case. Obviously, Joe Burrow is going to be the quote unquote top quarterback. I mean, he had a great year uh, this past year, winning the national championship, Heisman, broke all types of records. But at the same time, it was in, in one year. Uh, he was a part of that Joe Brady system, so a lot of that goes a long way. Um, but um, at the same time, I mean, you look at Tua. Tua's had three different coordinators. Um, he's been the most consistent quarterback part of the past uh, ever since his freshman year. Um, he's just uh, has such a moxie. I feel like he's been the standard when it comes to quarterbacks the past couple of years. And so um, just looking at Tua, looking at Burrow, um, you can see why teams would want to take Burrow. Obviously, he had the great year. He's a little bit more – I feel like this year he really proved how cerebral he was in the pocket by moving the ball downfield, not taking unnecessary uh, shots, and in that Joe Brady system, getting the ball out to those playmakers. Uh, being athletic enough in the pocket, uh, I think that's what probably Cincinnati's looking at. And then I feel like it really gets interesting when you look at the Washington Redskins at number two, because that's when kind of the tour conversation can kind of come up. Do they stay with Dwayne Haskins or – do they take the ultra great uh, talent in Chase Young from Ohio State at that number two pick? So um, it's hard to – you're always going to need a quarterback and you're always going to need air rushers. So, I mean, I don't see – it would be kind of hard to pass up on Chase Young. But, um, but yeah, a lot of people are saying those safer picks. But as far as me, if it comes to quarterback, if I'm the GM in one of those teams and I'm looking at the future of my program uh, organization – and knowing that the quarterback position is the most important, you can draft Tua, have him sit behind. He doesn't have to come in and start. He can kind of have a red shirt year. You can kind of bring him on later in the season, uh, maybe eight games into the season or whatever, and then have ease him on in, let him get acclimated, and uh, have your future Hall of Fame quarterback for the next 10 years or so. So that's just my thinking if I'm putting on the NFL GM hat. Now, as good as good uh, Matt as Bryce Young is, how excited are you to see Mac Jones lead this team in the upcoming season for Alabama? Uh, I'm very excited about Mac. Uh, just looking back at Mac playing his the past what three or four games, um, you know, looking back at the Auburn game, he actually played a really good game. If it wasn't for that that second uh, turnover, basically both turnovers. I think Matt has a little moxie about him. He kind of reminds me of A.J. McCarron. I think what would be key for Matt this year, him taking the next step, kind of looking at how Joe Burrow how it really was really cerebral in the pocket, it was athletic enough um, to move the ball, not take sacks, not take unnecessary hits, but get the ball into playmaker's hand. I think if Matt takes that step in athleticism and moving in the pocket, I think he'll have a lot of success, and he will have to because – um, you look at that quarterback room down there, it's a lot of competition, especially with the uh, the number one quarterback or player in the nation coming in and Bryce Young, who's, um, uh, from what I'm reading, is, is, is still continuing to develop and really looking to um, really be competitive in this quarterback race. He's Matt Cadell, ladies and gentlemen, former Alabama wide receiver who played for the Crimson Tide from 2003 to 07. Graciously joining us live here on In My Own Words, the podcast. Matt, we appreciate you taking time out of your Friday to join us, man. You be good. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. 
That was Alabama wide receiver, former tied wide receiver Matt Cadell coming on to get this conversation on about the NFL draft with Bama players and even answering a question on Mac Jones for the upcoming season. But we're going to go to our next break here on the show. Upon our return, we will dive back into your phone calls, thoughts, tweets, questions, and concerns after this. menswear in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to touchdown Alabama.com today and roll tide. We are back into the action, ladies and gentlemen, on a Friday, hottest show on the streets, best form of Alabama football. News, notes, and information you will find anywhere in my own words, the podcast. Yours truly, Stephen M. Smith. And it's your time again. Crimson Tide fans, 205. 205- 448-1358, the number to call in to let your voice be heard, 205-448-1358. You can leave a voicemail with that number. You can text with that number. Also, if Twitter is your thing, you can tweet the show directly at In My Own Words TDA. That's at In My Own Words TDA. You can also tweet me directly at Coaching M. Smith on Twitter. But we dive back into the chat line following a great interview from one former tight wide receiver, Matt Cadell. And we will pick this thing up with Kelsey Shepard, who writes in Brennan Thompson. So that, that, that must be the guy. That must be the guy that Shepard was referring to who could be the next Jalen Waddle. Brennan Thompson, he's out of Spearman, Texas. So definitely going to get, get home and crack open some film on Mr. Brennan Thompson. Let's see here. Willie Beeman writes in. Touchdown Alabama. Let's get it. We hear Willie Beeman. Happy that you are jumping on, tuning in live with us. At Willie351 writes in, I was at the game when Matt caught that pass. We was Liddy. So Willie351 was live at the Alabama Arkansas game 07. Bryant Denny with that touchdown reception. Tony Yayo writes in. Uh, Matt Cadell versus Danny Cadell. He's giving the edge to Matt Cadell as the better analyst. Cadell, Cadell can break some stuff down. We're going to definitely have him back on again. He can really break some stuff down. Let's see here. Willie351 writes in, I'm going to peep him, Kelsey. So 351 is also going to get some film on Brendan Thompson, the young man out of Spearman, Texas. You guys continuing to hit us up here on the YouTube chat line, but also 205-448-1358, the number to call in to get your conversation, your thoughts on your dialogue, your dialogue on with yours truly and talking Crimson Tide football, 205-448-1358. We go down to Willie Beeman who writes in, I'll take Tua over Burrow. Burrow's good. Burrow is great. I'm not knocking anything or taking anything from Burrow. My main thing is, is it Burrow or is it the system, right? Because this was Burrow was at LSU in 2018, right? Steve Ensminger was there. All the receivers were there. Terrace Marshall. When you look at Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Clyde Edwards, Elaire, all those guys were there, and Burrow only had 16 touchdowns and didn't even crack 3,000 yards passing. I'm just saying. It took Joe Brady coming in here to instill the right system, and that transformed Burrow from being maybe a sixth rounder to right now the potential number one overall pick. So big jump, big difference. I'm not saying Burrow's not good. I'm saying is it Burrow or is it Brady? And we're going to figure out 
his first NFL season what this is. Is it Joe Burrow? If it is, I will gladly admit to I was wrong. I will gladly admit to it. Is it Burrow or is it Brady? That's the question that you know, I want to have answered. Willie Beeman continues with Mac is a tough gunslinger who can stand in the pocket. He's got great poise. Very tough gunslinger. Saw it against Auburn. Took some hits. Got back up. Continued to fire the football. Had four touchdowns in that game. Had three scores against Michigan in the 35-16 win. Jones will be able to balance the offense. <clears throat> Being able to have the run and pass game intertwined there, I like what Mac brings to the table. Kelsey Shepard continues with, with all the rules in the NFL, you can't touch the quarterback for real. No way. Tua will be fine. Absolutely. With all the new rules in the league to where you can't hit the quarterback too high, you can't hit the quarterback too low, if he's sliding, he's, he's a defenseless player. If you attack the quarterback in any way, shape, or form illegally, a yellow piece of laundry is hitting the field, and you get a flag for a 15-yard penalty, and your coach is giving you a harsh butt chewing, probably not as harsh as what Nick Saban would give you, but still a harsh butt chewing. So the rules today fit the quarterback. I agree with that from one Kelsey Shepard. The Ratchet Dashikis, the Ratchet Dashikis writing in great show. We appreciate the love. They're coming from the Ratchet Dashikis here. Let's see here. Kelsey Shepard continues with Mac got an edge about him. He'll take Alabama back to the trophy. Mac's got an edge. When you can tell Nick Saban when to get on, when to get off, when you can tell Nick Saban, you want me to stop throwing a deep ball at practice, coach. Tell your defense to check me. He's got a uh, moxie about himself. He's got a A.J. McCarron type of charisma about himself. But he's also got the ability to kind of be that Jacob Coker in terms of lowering his shoulder if he needs to get extra yards. He's not uberly athletic, but Nick Saban doesn't really require for his quarterbacks just to be super athletic. Hey, be accurate, be precise. Get us in the right play. Lead the receiver down the field. And if you can get yards with your legs, then do so. But that's not necessarily a requirement. But Mac Jones, looking forward to seeing him taking even more steps forward in the upcoming season. We're going to go to a, another break here on the show. Continue to light us up in the chat line as you guys have been doing. But upon our return, we touch on one Jaleel Billingsley. Does Alabama have its next O.J. Howard or next Irv Smith and the young man from Chicago? We'll touch it up after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to Touchdown Alabama. Alabama.com today and roll tide. We are moving and grooving, grooving and moving, shaking and quaking on a Friday. TGIF edition of the show in my own worst of podcast, hottest form of Crimson Tide football. <clears throat> News, notes, and information, excuse me. Yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. And we get into one, Jaleel Billingsley at the tight end position. Well, Alabama return, is he the next O.J. Howard? Is he the next Irv Smith for 
Alabama football. And uh, in years past, under Nick Saban, Alabama has been known to have that really solid, dependable tight end. Now, I know in the early years of Saban, it was more so blocking tight ends versus pass-catching ones. When you talk Nick Walker, Travis McCall, Brian Bogler, you had some of those more so blocking guys. But you also had some pass-catching guys. Brad Smelly was really good. Michael Williams was really good. And then you bring in O.J. Howard, Irv Smith Jr. So it's been a strong mixture of both. Colin Peak was good. Preston Dow was good. Hale Hinches could catch a touchdown pass here and there. So, I mean, you get my point. So, But in terms of having that strong combination, that mixture of not only being a great inline blocker, but also catching the ball on the inline, being flexed out wide, running routes, bringing in passes, opening up more of the field and be that security blanket for the quarterback, giving that signal caller another viable option. Is Jaleel Billingsley the next one to do that? Here is somebody that's coming into his sophomore year, six foot four, 228 pounds out of Chicago, and a guy that this past season had one catch for 19 yards against Mississippi State, but it was a catch to where he caught the ball from Tua Tagovailoa. He immediately turned, exploded upfield. He uh, not exploded going getting down the field. He ex- he uh, ran over a defensive back going out of bounds. Really finished the play with ferocity. And uh, this is a person that an athlete that I remember. Devontae Smith spoke to reporters during the middle portion of the 2019 season, and he talked about how this is nothing new for Billingsley. He naturally does things special in practice. He naturally does something special every practice, every drill, every warm-up, every station. So he is normally one to cause people's heads to turn. So he's one that can make those big-time plays. He's one that can give you that viable production. It's this year, can he really break out and sort of give Mac Jones and give Bryce Young when Young enters games that big target in the middle of the field or that big target on a post route or a slant route or a seam route or a crossing route. Just flash the number 19 Let the quarterback feel your presence, know your presence, so he can get you the football. But Jaleel Billingsley, very, very athletic. A guy that's got the size. A guy that has the route running prowess and the capability. I remember Nick Saban talked about he's getting better in uh, every sense of being a tight end, in every sense of being a viable, viable option on the field. And to me, sometimes I go back to – What O.J. Howard could have been if the tie would have used him more than what it did. And no offense to Lane Kiffin, he did unleash Howard in the 2015 college football playoff against Michigan State. Of course, the national championship game against Clemson where he went off for five catches, 206 yards, and two touchdowns. But you almost have to wonder if Howard would have been targeted more in the 2015 regular season prior to the postseason, the numbers could have been bigger, right? Well, 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 I guess him not being targeted as much allow him to go into the league with not much wear and tear on his body. I get that. But selfishly speaking, I would have liked to have seen more of O.J. Howard being targeted. Now, Irv Smith Jr., that was a different story. Tua found ways to hook up with Smith throughout the entire 2018 season as Irv was one of five to six guys that had over 20 receptions. He had 42 uh, to be exact for 711 yards. So 704, yeah, yeah, for 711 yards, had about seven touchdown receptions in the 2018 season. So Irv was not cheated at all. Irv got the football, whether it was in the middle of the field, whether it was on a seam route running down the field, whether it was a slant pattern, a, a timing route, a crossing route, Irv Smith got the football. So that's what I want to see from Steve Sarkeesian in terms of game planning for one, General Billingsley, finding ways to get him the ball. Because 
as much as we would like to see you guys being the Alabama fans, me personally and media, as much as, much as we would like to see Terrell Shaver step up, and I ho- hopefully he does step up, as much as we like to see John Meachie step up as that third option at receiver or a <clears> – <throat> Xavier Williams step up, a Slade Bolden step up, or one of these freshman guys in this 2020 group here. Keep your eyes on Billingsley. It would be nice to see a tight end kind of become that third guy because with the receivers Alabama has and with the pass-catching abilities of Najee Harris, on top of that, Trey Sanders has the ability to also catch the ball out out of the backfield. It would be nice to go back to having that tight end in the middle of the field, having that tight end running that seam route, having that tight end working the slants, working the crossing patterns, working the timing routes, just having that tight end to bring the full balance into the picture. So, Jaleel Billingsley, keep your eyes on him in the upcoming season, the sophomore. He could be the next O.J. Howard. He could legitimately be the next Irv Smith. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm rolling my cards. I'm rolling my poker chips to the side of Jaleel Billingsley. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, you want the best in news, notes, information, and content on the Alabama Crimson Tide. This is very simple, very easy to do. You download the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You can get this or your iPhone if you're rocking Team Apple, the iPhone App Store, Google Play Store if you just so happen to have the Android phone. For the podcast options, if you like iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, or iHeartRadio, we got you covered right here on TDA. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit people, I will return on Monday to continue the conversation that is Alabama football. But until next time, folks, I leave you as always. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, value, appreciate your husbands, children. Get the work done. Find ways to legitimately now not be bored. Get those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. Protect yourself. Protect the loved ones around you. Until next time, folks, I'm Stephen M. Smith. And this has been in my own words.